loving people where there is no on veneration. He likes to be in a more relaxed atmosphere. And he gets that atmosphere in a place called Vrindavan. Have you heard of Vrindavan? Yes. Vrindavan is a very holy place. It's uh, not very far away from Mathura. And Lord Krishna lived there in Vrindavan 5,000 years ago and performed his pastimes there. And one of the pastimes which happened was this Damodara Mila. So we are observing this month. We've been following this month. Every day in this month, we will sing this psalm, which is called the Damodar Astakam. It's in Sanskrit. It's written a long time ago. It's there in one of the one of the ancient scriptures. So we sing the song, and at that time we also offer a light to Lord Damodar. Offering the light is very important. Because the light signifies that there's no darkness. Where there is light, there will be no darkness. And where there's no darkness, that means there's no ignorance. So darkness is like ignorance and light is like knowledge. So we want to bring people out of ignorance, bring them to the light, into the knowledge. This is the significance of offering the lamp. It's very special that during this month of Damodar, whatever pious activities, whatever religious activities you perform this month, you get a hundred, hundreds of times more benefit at this time than you do it at any other time in the month, in the year. So this whole month is very special. That's why a number of people, they will go to Vrindavan, so they'll be in a holy place, or they will res they will minimize their material activities, and they will focus more on religious activities, pious activities, which are done for the pleasure of Lord Sri Krishna. So this is the idea of this month of Karti, and today is the last day. So it's very nice that you're all together. And we can tell you about how you can also benefit from this month of Kanti, which is finishing today, simply by worshipping Krishna, by offering the lamp to Krishna, and by hearing also the song. And if you can learn to sing the song also, very nice. You get a lot. The benefit is it destroys all of the doshas which are affecting us. Do you have any doshas? <laughs> yeah, probably we all have, right? You know, I, and maybe you have also. So the doshas are troubling us. Even Arjuna also said to, in the Bhagavad Gita, he said, uh, Karpanya dosho pahata swabhav. Arjuna was talking about his fault. He said, because of my fault. He said, I cannot understand properly what I should do. And he asked <coughs> Lord Krishna to help him. And Lord Krishna did. Lord Krishna became his teacher. And that's the speaking of the Bhagavad Gita. So this month of Damodar is an opportunity for us to also understand the relationship which we have with Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna. That he is not only the teacher of Arjuna, but he's the teacher of each and every one of us, that we all have an, a relationship with him. And when he spoke the Bhagavad Gita, he didn't speak it just for Arjuna, but he spoke it for all of us. So it's a, an, it's a perennial message, it's an eternal message, and it's meant for everyone throughout all time. The Bhagavad Gita was spoken even not only on this planet, it was spoken on the sun planet. To the sun god. And then the sun god gave the knowledge to Vivishwan. Vivishwan gave it to Manu. And this way it came to the Rajashis. But Lord Krishna had to come again 5,000 years ago to reestablish because the knowledge was lost. In the course of time, 
the knowledge was lost. Lord Krishna to come and speak it again. That's why Krishna comes in this world. He comes millennium after millennium <laughs> to give pleasure to his devotees and to also re-establish religious principles because we forget. We're very forgetful people. We don't remember our spiritual position. We identify more with the material, with the body, and with our material situation. And we forget that actually we are all souls. We are all souls living in the body. And the body is described to be like the dress. Just like your dress. Sometimes you wear a sari. Sometimes you wear Western clothes. Sometimes you wear Punjabi dress. You know, you have different dresses. You change the dress. But you're the same person. <laughs> In the same way, we change the body. From the young person to the middle age to the old age. The body is changing. But the person is the same. And a similar thing happens at the end of life. We give up the body. What, death, what is death? Death is simply a change of body. You give up the old body or the diseased body or the infirm body, take a new. But we have to understand that the, the way we live in this life it will determine the type of body we're going to take in the future. Just like the body which we have today is the result of our past activity. In the same way, the body we're going to take in the future will depend on how we live and act in this life. They say in Hindi, right? Jai Sakarega, Ai Sabarega. You know that that teaching is there in every culture. In China, they have a similar teaching because I spent a lot of time in China teaching. And in China, they also have a saying. They say, "Shan yo shan bao, er yo er bao." Can you understand Chinese? No, you don't. Understand. But uh, and the, the meaning is the same, just like we say, "You as you sow, so shall you reap." You get the results of your activity. You do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. The question is, what is good and what is bad? There's different standards, you know. When some people think, oh, oh, it's good to to eat all kinds of animal flesh. They think it's good to drink alcohol. You know, they have all kinds of. Um, wrong ideas about what is actually good. We should understand there are principles of Dharma and the principles are four. The, the example of Dharma is that the bull stands on four legs and the four legs represent the pillars of religion and these four legs represent Satyam, uh, Socham, Daya, Tapa. Satyam, truthfulness. Socham, cleanliness. Daya, mercy. Tapa, austerity. These four things are valued in every culture of the world. Cleanliness. We want to be clean internally as well as externally. How to clean internally? Well, that to do by chanting the holy name, by the chanting of Hare Krishna. That is actually how we keep ourselves clean internally. And if you keep yourself clean internally, then the external body will also be pure by that chant. And then Daya, mercy. What is mercy? Mercy means we don't kill the other animals. Then what to eat? Well, there are many things. There's grains and beans and fruits, and vegetables. There are many things. We don't have to kill the animals in order to eat. There's an abundance of things to eat. If we 
understand what is the drop of food. And so we say, especially you don't want to eat cow. That is the most sinful thing to eat the meat of the cow. Because cow is the mother, one of the mothers, right? We have seven mothers. There are different mothers. Earth is a mother, and then the king's wife is a mother, the brahmana's wife is a mother, the guru's wife is a mother, we have our own mother, the nurse is a mother, and, and then also we take cow. Because the cow gives milk, which is very important for our development, the brain. So, this is, the, there are four principles, cleanliness, mercy, austerity, and truth. Austerity means to give up intoxication, try to avoid all kinds of intoxication. Intoxication is things like alcohol, drugs, these things. So pride is also an intoxication. We want to also be so chanting Hare Krishna Mantra helps us to develop this quality. Recording in progress. Mantra, then it awakens the spiritual energy and you can feel relief from the material energy. So in this age, this age is called Kali Yu. Have you heard that before? Kali Yu means the age of quarrel. Age of argument, all everywhere people quarreling and fighting. In the home, they're fighting. Nations are fighting with each other. So many quarrels are going. Symptom of this age, people are not peaceful. But there's one good thing about this, about this age. And the one good thing is that simply by chanting, by chanting the names of God, you can get all. Just as you were doing when you were worshipping the Tosi, Tosi Maharani, you were chanting also Hare Krishna. So you get the blessing from Tosi Maharani. Tosi is a very special plant. She's sacred and she's a great devotee of Krishna. So every day we will worship the Tosi tree. We will worship the Tosi tree. We will sing the song which you were singing. We will chant Hare Krishna Mantra and we will pour a little water on, on the root on, or on the root of the tree. And we will also bow down to her if, if we're in good health, bow down to Tosi. It's very special because by worship of Tosi, Tosi has she has a lot of devotion and by contact, by offering worship to her, she will give us some of her devotion. So it's very special for us to worship the Tosi tree. It's very nice that you can have Tosi here. She's growing very nicely. Many devotees in Dubai, they're keeping the Tosi tree. They're also developing the devotion by having her in their home. So Tosi is a nice devotee. And we also worship Damoda, the Lord Krishna, the name of Krishna. So today only we're the last day in our worship. Usually we will do it for one month. Now, if you like to continue to do it, you can. This is not a problem. But generally we do it for the one month. But it's very nice. Everyone can do it. Everyone can take part. Everyone can offer a lamp. You can see the key lamps. And by offering the lamp, we're opening up our knowledge, our consciousness, our devotion is awake. So very special. So I'm very glad that I could come here to be with all of you here in the top of the bike. <laughs> and on behalf of we, we hope all the people in the Bible will be benefited by the worship of the Dhamma. So are there any questions? Hear from you? Anyone want to ask anything? Anything not clear?
and don't be shy if you have something to think of. You may be thinking something, other people may think the same thing. So if you ask the question, other people will also think. You can see the worship of Tosi is done very easily. You don't need a lot of paraphernalia. Very simple. And she grows here in Dubai. You have a lot of sunlight here. That's important for Tosi. And Vrindavan also, Vrindavan is also dry. It's so like here in Dubai, the desert is dry. So it's suitable for growth of Tosi. And Tosi is very important because the Tosi leaves, they're offered to Lord Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, how many of you have read the Bhagavad Gita? Anyone? Yes, Pinti read the Bhagavad Gita. Do you have other people? Do you have a copy of the Bhagavad Gita? You don't have Bhagavad Gita? You have to get yourself Bhagavad Gita. You have? Good. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Palam Tori Yomi Bhakti Apayachi Dadaham Bhakti Uparitam Aishnami Prayakatam you know the meaning? If you offer me, Krishna said, if you offer me with love and devotion, patra meaning a leaf. A leaf. So what is he going to offer to Krishna? That's Tosi. The Tosi leaves are offered to Krishna. Other things like fruit, flowers, water. Okay. But Krishna especially likes the Tosi. How many of you keep Tosi in your home? Yes? Right. Several of you, yes? Yeah. You can also, others can also get Tosi. We have, you know, she grows easily from the seeds which grow on the top, from the their manjaris coming from the top. The seeds <coughs> they use the seed and they'll sprout and get Tosi. Tosi grows where there's devotion. You have to have devotion. That's the important ingredient to grow the Tosi tree. So, I'm sure you all have some devotion. You can direct that devotion to Tosi and grow a nice tree. And where there is Tosi, there's always auspicious. It creates a very auspicious situation. Very nice. Tosi. And when you keep Tosi at home, then you can also you want to chant. You want to chant Hare Krishna. Just like we have our big bag and we do our chanting. How many of you got Yapamala? Oh, okay. So those of you who don't have Japamala, you should also get some Japamala, right? Kamalangi will give you Japamala. <laughs> I will just say on Sunday I was in Uh, just on Sunday, I had, we had a program in Abu Dhabi, and we had many people there, and they were doing Tosi marriage, the marriage of Tosi with Shaligram. Mm -hmm. It's a very big event. And one lady asked me at the end of the talk, she asked me, she said, I have trouble with my mind. I have a lot of negative thoughts. What can I do? So I told her, you need to chant Hare Krishna. And so then one of the devotees had some beads, and so he said, you give her some mala. And so she came forward and we gave her the beads. She said she would chant. And then many other devotees also came and said, I also want beads. I also want to chant. And in this way, in this way, many people also took the beads and they're going to begin chanting. So it's very nice, those of you who don't have the Japa Mala, you get the Japa Mala and also chant. And if you can sow the Tosi tree in your home, wonderful. Your home will become very, very auspicious. It will create very peaceful, pleasing atmosphere. And you have the protection from Tosi Mala. 
So that is my suggestion, my request to all of you. We want you all to chant the Maha Mantra on Bhakti Beast and keep one Tulsi tree in your home, in your apartment. You don't have a lot of trouble to take care of her. Just simply have to offer some water. That's something which you all little water on the root. We say water the root. Don't put the water on the leaves or on the branches. Water the root. When you water the root, then all the leaves and branches will be nourished. In the same way, some of you may be worshipping, maybe you're worshipping Ganesh, or maybe you're worshipping Durga, or maybe you're devoted to Lord Shiva. There are many other devas or gods. But when you worship Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna is the mula prakriti. He's the root. He's the mula of all this material work. And when you satisfy Lord Krishna, then all of the devas are satisfied. There are many devas. But they say 33 crore devas. So you cannot satisfy all of them. It would be a lot of work. But if you simply satisfy Lord Krishna, then all the devas are satisfied. This is the statement of the Shastra. So how to satisfy Lord Krishna? Simply by chanting. Simply we chant, right? You all know the mantra of that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna is attracted by the chanting of this holy name. Krishna says, I am not in the Vaikuntha. And he said, I am not in the yogis meditating on me. He said, I am wherever my devotee is chanting my name. So you want to get Krishna to come and be present? You just chant Hare Krishna. Krishna is the chant. You call his name. Just like if we call your name, Ambika, 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 you're all right. Then Ambika will come, right? <laughs> So if you call Krishna, Krishna, definitely Krishna. You have to. But we have to call with feeling from the heart. It should be with love. Krishna wants our love. He is not greedy to get our fruits and our flowers, but he wants our, our love, our devotion. <coughs> this is very And that's also the message of the Bhagavad Gita, that Krishna says that he is conquered by devotion. We, we, without devotion, we will not be able understand all right so now we can do the Damodar prayer any question anyone how many rounds are you chanting yeah. and also God beats how many rounds you can chant I changed. 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 I well, you know, you get clickers. You can get a different... Yeah, I have that as yeah, a counter. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. Well, I have a question. I have a question. I mean, this is related to quantity versus quality. Yeah. I mean, if you're supposed to be doing mindless chanting, just people just chanting for the sake of chanting, yeah. Where is to do it a few times, but with absolute sincerity? What are your thoughts? Yes. Well, but not as many times. 
No, definitely quality is important, but quantity is also. We don't just want only quality. <coughs> you know, you can say, oh, well, I chant my three, <laughs> three times or something, my mantras. But it's not much, quant how much time did you spend to do it? You didn't give a lot of time to chant. So okay, you said it, you said chanting with quality, but not much quantity. So acharyas, the the spiritual teachers, they give a standard of what they think is good. Just like generally for people who do meditation, silent meditation. Now, how long are you going to meditate? Oh, I can do meditation for two minutes. Two minutes of meditation. It's not enough, you know. You're, you should do, they expect you to do two hours. You should sit and meditate two hours. It's nice. So, and similarly, you know, when we were at school, and the te when they would teach us, you have to write, the, write this word and write that word, write it out ten times, and they would tell you, write this ten times and write that ten times. In this way, we started to learn improve our vocabulary by writing the word over and over again the vocabulary improves so similarly with the chanting we have to do a sufficient quantity in order to develop the good taste for the chant it's actually a question of how much taste we've developed for this chant there should be some real feeling that I want to check. It's not a question of force, but rather naturally I want to check. I, I take pleasure. One of the great acharyas, he's written a Sanskrit poem about chanting. And he describes there, he said, Nobody, no one knows how much nectar there is in the two syllables, Krish and Na. He said, when that holy name enters into my ears, then I wish I had many, many ears to hear. And when the holy name appears on my tongue, I desire to have many tongues to chant the name. And when the holy name enters into my heart, then it conquers the activities of the mind, and all my senses come in there. So in this way, he describes it, some of the, the higher levels, the higher realization of the power of the Holy Name, the benefits get of chanting. So if we only chant a few times, it would be you only do it for a few minutes or 10 minutes or something. Then, you know, you, according to how much chant you, you get benefit. You do more chanting, you get more benefit. Of course, as you, quality is also important. Quality is important, but quantity is also important. Prabhuji, something related to this one. She said, for the people of this country, I find it very difficult to chant very fast. But I have seen this called devotees, they chant like eight minutes one month. But if I'm doing that, I do very mechanical, fast as So if I want to like do quality wise, I take 15 to 18 minutes to chant. So if I do three manas, I'm taking good enough 45 50 minutes. But I can speed up and make it into six manas. But then I feel that I'm only interested in finishing it. Well, so, there, there are no rules. So in this some people chant that, other people chant slow. It's up to every individual. You can chant at your speed, no problem. Very good. So, with the same time, like if I devote 30 minutes, so if I chant three months, two and a half months, six and a half months, four months, it's okay. The quality is better than the quality. Yeah. The quality is good, but try. Generally, the teacher will say you must chant 16 rounds. 16 rounds. Okay, so you have to finish it. So in the day, 
in the day, how about your chance in life at 15 minutes? Don't take you four hours. Four hours. Six, 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 six. Other people, the chanting usually take two hours. Right? Some if you chant faster than two hours, then you know I don't think the chant is much good. I need to chant more. <laughs> the chanting is so quick, as you say, yeah. Chant faster, right? Once more. Yes. If you go slow, you find diverts. Right. That's my observation. That's also true. So yeah. I, I also have a little chant faster. Right. So, yes. chanting yes. Uh, session, I try to be with her so that then I have realized that it's better when you chant fast and you are concentrating. Con you have to better concentrate better. more. Chant fast. You well, chant slow. You very fast. And this how I am not many. Okay, you are know, chanting. But, that's an important point. They're chanting their way. You should chant. You have to chant. You don't have to chant the way they chant. You can chant as Mati Ji said. You chant with quality. But chanting has to go on. That's the important. Thing. You have to chant. Don't think, oh, I can't chant like that. You don't have to chant the way they chant. You can chant at your own speed. But there should be chanting. That's so the chanting, what kind of changes that thing? Is is it that because we believe that there is there are three levels of uh, existence? So is, is there something like that that we got in uh, Is there something like that? Does any chanting do anything at these levels? Yes, yeah, there's the gross body, three levels of chanting, three levels of body, the spiritual body. But uh, the chanting is to, well, uh, the chanting will purify our conscious and it will bring us from the material platform, it can bring us to the spiritual platform. The chanting also described, there's a prayer by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said that it cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years together. So that in, our, in our heart or in our mind, there's a lot of contamination. So the chanting will help to purify the mind and the heart. The heart, you know, the heart disease, this is the heart disease, the dust from the material life. And the chanting also extinguishes the fire of conditional life. Material life is like being forest fire, but the chanting helps to extinguish that fire. And it gives us a taste of the nectar, the highest pleasure for which we're always anxious. It's a life of transcendental knowledge. By chanting, we will awaken transcendental knowledge. All of the Vedic knowledge is in the mantra. So you chant nicely and the very knowledge will give you. Yes. Knowledge with quality will also come to quantity, right? We will believe as we chant more and more of quality also. Yes. We hope so. Mm -hmm. We hope so. Mm -hmm. so usually we do three rounds of production, right? Of the Zimarani. Yeah. I was reading in the theories of Kartika that uh, four rounds, is it that during the month or something like that? Or is it that it's mentioned? Because I was reading and somebody also asked me this question that it was written <coughs> to do four rounds of production. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm hearing for the first time. Yeah, usually we do three rounds, right? Yeah. I knew that that's it. Yeah. Not so fine. Yeah. The important thing is the devotion, the, the attitude which we have. Thank you so much. We can do that now with the last Okay.
We can give foods. We got can. it from the previous program also. Really? Yeah. Should yeah. we just pack some wood? No, we have a lot. Really? Yeah. Maybe you can just give one. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 